Getting right into today's video, we are starting off with my Kiara Sky e-file. I'm going to go ahead and prep her nails as usual. I am taking my e-file and I have her at a speed of about 4,000 RPMs. That's my comfortable speed for my prep work. Along with that, I'm using the mandrel bit from Profiles Backstage. Also, along with that, I'm using their sanding bands in the color purple. And these are medium grit. They're super, super fine. So medium grit, in my opinion, is still okay to use on the natural nail as long as you're being very, very gentle and have very light pressure when doing that process. So I'm just going to go ahead and fully push back that cuticle area with this bit. And in the same motion, I'm going to be prepping that nail by just gently buffing off the shine and also taking advantage of using this bit. I'm going to be removing any lifting that my client may have. It is very, very minimal, but I still want to make sure that I fully remove any lifting whatsoever. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering what she had on previously. If you guys missed out that video, I will leave that so you guys can check that out. But I did go ahead and do a backfill. So in that last video that I did on her nails, we did have a nude base. And previous to that set, she had clear. So this is what you're seeing now come through. She has that clear base. I did a backfill off camera just because I've done it a lot before and I don't want to get it like super repetitive for you guys. So if you guys are interested in seeing an entire backfill process make sure to check out my other videos i have tons of those already on my channel but we're just going to be focusing on the application and the nail art for today's video So once I'm done buffing off that shine, we're going to be going in with my needle bit. This one is from Profiles Backstage. My e-file is still at a speed of 4,000 RPMs and I'm just going to carefully go in with very, very light pressure and buff off that rest of the dead skin that I may have missed with my mandrel bit. I'm going in with the cuticle ball bit as well. Very gentle again, very light pressure. And now I have moved my speed up to 5,000 RPMs. I feel like that's a little bit more effective when getting rid of any stubborn dead skin. You can also go up a little bit higher, uh, but always just be very, very careful and gentle. You do not want to hurt your client. I'm taking the Kiara Sky Lint Free Wipes and a little bit of Young Nail Swipe. I'm going to be cleaning the surface of the nail while also dehydrating her natural nail. So I'm focusing on that area specifically. It's going to really help remove any extra oils that our nails naturally produce. Now I'm going in with the Triple X Bond from Not Polished. This is their primer. I absolutely recommend this primer. It is really, really good. I do go in with two coats just to ensure that we don't get any lifting. Now we're getting right into our acrylic application. I'm using this really, really pretty, beautiful yellow from Not Polish. This one is called Sun Kiss, and I think it's so, so pretty. It's like very pastel, but also a little bit on the bright side. Definitely pretty opaque, so I definitely appreciate that as well. Now I'm going in with this beautiful color, called Tequila Lime from Kiara Sky. Super, super opaque and very blendable as well. So I'm gonna be using these powders to really help with my ombre application. It's gonna make the process so much easier when you have products that blend very well. So I'm just taking that, putting it at the tip, and we're basically gonna be doing that with all of our colored powders. Then we're gonna be going in with a nudish pink to kind of blend everything out. So I'm just making sure that I'm getting an even coat of that. Next on the middle finger, we're gonna be using this really pretty blue. This one is also from Kiara Sky called Baby Boo, but I absolutely love it. Now, because she already has a pretty good thick layer of clear underneath, I'm gonna be focusing on adding very, very little colored powder so that I can also encapsulate and build up that thickness that she likes and she requests fully. So now I'm going in with Not Polish Flash Mob. It is a really pretty lilac purple. And then we're going to be going in with pink on the thumb. So I'm going in with like a nice rainbow transition from the pinky to the thumb. And then we switched it up backwards on the other hand. Same process, same colors, just different combo. 
one for this beautiful pink. This one is called Rose Water from Not Polish. This one is actually new that I have never even touched. So I did go through all my colors and I was like, oh, I'm going to try this one out. And it's super, super pretty. Definitely recommend it. The color is absolutely stunning and perfect for the springtime. So again, I'm going to be adding a very thin layer of that, blending it down towards the tip and really focusing on that middle section to blend it up so that when I go in with my nude color, it is a very easy transition. Now we're going in with Nude Panther. She did request a little bit more of a pink nude this time because we did a yellow undertone one last time. So this one is super, super pretty. One of my go-to pinkish nude colors. Highly recommend it. Goes with every freaking skin tone you could think of. So definitely a must in a nail text stash. So I'm going in and just infilling the rest of the nail, blending it downwards. And you can see how effortlessly this ombre comes out whenever you really blend the two colors nicely in that middle section. I'm not doing too much work. This process did not take me very long at all. Super, super quick and definitely looks really, really good. So I'm going to go in now with a small bead up in the cuticle area and really try to get that as close to the cuticle and make sure you're holding your finger downward so that it doesn't flood that cuticle area because ultimately that will also cause lifting. And then I noticed that I had a little chunk of acrylic, dried acrylic in there. So I just took it out with some tweezers and then went in and infilled that area again. We're gonna repeat that on the rest of the nails and then we're gonna be encapsulating with clear acrylic. Now we're going in with our clear acrylic. This one is the one from Not Polish and I'm just going in and really focusing on that middle section. I wanna make sure that I am fully protecting that ombre effect that we created with our acrylic because sometimes if you do not encapsulate, you will go in and file and then you're gonna file off part of that ombre. So you wanna make sure you encapsulate it. I'm just again focusing on that middle section and then of course down towards the tip because that is basically where it is more than likely going to break if it does break. So I am building these up pretty thick because that is what she likes and honestly for the length and the thickness of them, you really, really want them thick. So make sure you guys are building that up to the client's standards and also uh, make sure you're letting them know if they want that length, they have to have them a little bit on the thicker side. Now, once everything is fully dry, I'm going in with my e-file once again. And this time I'm using the 5-in-1 bit from Kiara Sky in the color Unicorn or the purple one, I believe. And I'm just going in very, very quickly around that cuticle area and then down vertically across the entire nail. And I'm making sure that I make that acrylic nice and flush up in the cuticle area so that that also prevents any lifting issues. And I'm just doing it very lightly because I try to make my acrylic as neat as possible. So whenever I go in and file, it is very minimal work that I need to do. Now I did go in with my hand file and file the sides. I just accidentally got completely out of frame when I was doing that process. So unfortunately I had to cut that out of the tutorial but I did go in and file these sides again to make everything super super sharp and now we're going in with matted from not polish I am top coating these nails first because we are going to be doing some topical nail art and per usual I always forget to top coat before I go in with said designs so we're not doing that today I remembered like fully last minute I had already brought out all my colors and then I remembered <laughs> She needed a matte base, so I'm not gonna risk it this time. We're gonna go ahead and top coat. I'm gonna be placing that in the light for a full minute. Once it's fully dry and all the way matte, we're gonna be going in with our nail art. Now 
Now for the nail art, I am bringing out the pastel colors from the Profiles Backstage website. These are the gel liners and I'm also going to be using some of the frosting gel paints as well because I couldn't find some of the colors. So for the pinky, because it is yellow, we're going to be using the pastel yellow from the gel liners. And I actually put them all on my little tile and I'm using my McCart nail art brush from Amazon because it's just my comfort zone and I honestly prefer this over the applicators that come with the actual liners. So I'm just basically starting off, we're going to be doing triangle negative space designs, okay? So I'm basically outlining it. You can always start off, I did it on the other hand and it worked just as good or maybe even better, but you can draw out an outline of a triangle and then infill all the other space um, and then go like that. It's honestly probably easier that way. I was just kind of messing around with my application to kind of see what I liked better for this specific design. So on this hand, I decided to kind of just go piece by piece from the nail. And it honestly didn't like make the time any longer, but um, I will say if you are starting off and you are unsure, I would just draw an outline of the triangles and then go in and infill all the outside areas of that triangle. But I'm going to be trying to do this as neat as possible and uh, kind of just randomly doing triangles along the nail. I feel like this is such a cool design. I absolutely love how it turned out. Um, I am changing out the sizes, the way the triangle is on the nail, kind of just eyeballing it to see where and how it fits best as I'm going. Once I am content with that design, I'm going to go in with this very micro fine glitter from Profiles Backstage. And I'm just taking my cuticle pusher and just pouring it over top of that wet gel. I would definitely highly recommend you guys flash cure these in the light before you go on to your next finger. I am only showing you guys the process on one hand, but I will say when I was working on my client, I actually was alternating from hand to hand. So as soon as I got done with the yellow on this pinky, I put it in the light and I was working on the other hand while she was waiting to dry. So just a little insight on that. But I'm going to be going ahead and repeating that process on all of the nails, just changing out the colors as I go. This one is the pastel green, also from the gel liners, and I'm doing the same process, kind of outlining it a little bit and then infilling all of the outer areas of the rest of the nail. And then as far as the glitter goes, I did forget to mention that that one is called Unicorn from the Micro Fine Glitters on Profiles Backstage. It has a very iridescent kind of sheen to it, but it also has like more of a purple undertone. So definitely get more of purple in this glitter. But I'm just going to go ahead and finish this off and then we will be back. Now for the middle finger, I did go ahead and mix my neon blue from the frosting gel paints and the pure white from the frosting gel paints. 
reason being because I couldn't find my pastel blue gel liner. I don't know what happened to it. So I improvised and went ahead and mixed it. And I will say that I have never really paid attention to the consistency of either or. But after switching from the gel liners to the frosting gel paints, huge difference. These are way more opaque than the gel liners are. The gel liners are definitely way more uh, see-through not as full coverage and the consistency is way more watery than the frosting gel paints so i was like wow i never really realized it until now so i figured i would let you guys know my thoughts on that as well i'm gonna go ahead and finish that application This is for my day one Again, we're going to be pouring that glitter over top before it is dry and then we're going to be fully placing all of the nails into the light for a full minute. I like to do two minutes just to be safe so that everything is fully, fully cured, especially because you are layering on some powder. But that basically concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys learned a ton and I'll see you guys next time. Nobody used to know me.